All right, hey everybody. Uh, let me know if you can, uh, if you guys can see me, okay? All right, this was on a little bit of a delay, so I wanted to make sure that uh, everybody uh, could see me, okay? So, all right. So, uh, thanks for uh, tuning in tonight. I uh, I greatly appreciate it. So tonight we're going to be doing a uh, a live, basically, rundown of the uh, Bourbon Thirty. Uh, products. Uh, Jeff will be jumping in here shortly. Actually, he's just uh, signing in. He'll probably let us know um, whether or not there's, um, uh, or you know, kind of, he, he's gonna he's gonna let us know when he's in. He's on his uh, his daughter's uh, computer, so we'll we'll find out there. So basically, tonight, what I'm gonna try to do is we'll do a uh, a rundown or go through basically six uh, different uh, products. So. Um, starting with, uh, we're going to go from the lowest proof uh, all the way up through uh, essentially the, the highest proof one that they've got. So there's the four samples that I've got that are the uh, Bourbon 30 itself. And um, then we'll have uh, two of the Jay Mattingly um, private reserves, the 1845. So um, they were nice enough to send me a few samples of these and uh, wanted to uh, to kind of do that uh, tonight. So Jeff will be in uh, here real soon. So I'll keep an eye on the uh, the chat and uh, let me know. So um, let me know also, can you guys hear me okay? Everything looks okay on, on your end. Just wanted to, to kind of make sure. So I've got a little bit of a, a different setup tonight. So I wanted to make sure that uh, that everything was good, so. Yep. Hey, Nick, how's it going? So, so far we've got, uh, let's see who we've got in the chat. So, all right, let's run it down. So, um, we got 11 right now. So Chris, Santa Cruz and Moose John. Thanks, bud. Um, Chris Beaton. Hey, Chris, how's it going? Uh, who else we have here? Jason, thanks, buddy, for coming in. I appreciate it. Dan the Man Trout, hey, buddy. Eric Gilbert, how's it going? John, Blind Whiskey Reviews, thanks for stopping in. Mr. Mattingly, thanks for uh, stopping in. I appreciate it. And if uh, if you want to say anything, Jeff, uh, type whatever you want in. Uh, I'm sure the guys and ladies will be interested to uh, to kind of hear what you have to say as well. So... Uh, feel free to uh, to say whatever. So thanks again for your for your time. So, all right. So hey, Welsh, how's it going? Nick, how's it going? Yes, uh, we're in uh, the good old state of Wisconsin, and right now it's um, right around that uh, 30, 40 below, something like that. And tomorrow it's supposed to be even worse. So, all right. So why don't we go ahead and um, we'll kind of uh, we'll kind of get into everything. So hey, Jim, how's it going? So what I'm going to start with, in, um, and Jeff, you can chime in if you want uh, regarding that. I'm going to start with the lowest proof and, and again, work my way all the way up to uh, the, the highest proof, and we'll kind of go from there. So the first one I've got is, um, so this is going to be their Bourbon 30, uh, the single barrel. This one was um, bottled at 80 proof, and um, there's a little bit of information on this. So... Uh, again, 40% ABV, 80 proof, aged a minimum of four years. So we know we've got a little bit of age on that. So um, we'll kind of see what uh, what we've got. I guess before we get into it, let me know what everybody else is uh, is kind of drinking tonight. I'm always interested to to know that. So let me know what you what you guys are drinking. So all right, so. Again, this is the Bourbon 30 single barrel. And again, we're gonna work our way through to a proof age, um, all the way through, um, we've got a the small batch, and then we've got a rye whiskey, and then two of the J. Mattingly 1845 uh, releases. Um, one of them is 106 proof, and the other, I believe, is 116 proof, so. All right, so. And Jeff, if I uh, if I miss on something or or there's something that you want to correct, feel free to do so. I want to make sure that I've got uh, all my information correct. So, all right. So I'm starting again with the um, the Bourbon 30 
the single barrel. So, and thanks again, guys, for uh, joining. I, I appreciate you uh, doing this. I uh, one of the things I wanted to do in 2019 was start to do uh, a few more uh, live streams, and um, well, well, we'll start here with this today. So, all right, let's get into the uh, into the review. All right. Boy, so right away on this one, with it being four years old, and again, 80 proof, I'm not getting a ton of heat on this. Again, this is the Bourbon 30 single barrel. Uh, you get a nice oak presence with a little bit of kind of that corniness to it. Um, nice, nice kind of vanilla, kind of a nice vanilla note to it. Um, not... Um, not overpowering anything and again at 80 proof you're not expecting to get um you know really much or or any heat coming off on the nose yeah really nice kind of a sweet a nice sweet nose so all right let's give this a uh, let's give this a try cheers guys So with the with the first sip, I would say right away, you get this real nice kind of vanilla caramel. It's nice and smooth, sweet. This is one of those bourbons I lump into the category of if you're looking for something to just sit down with and sip on and not have to worry about, you know, you know, it you know necessarily, you know blowing your socks off or anything like that it's just very approachable nice and sweet good amount of oak to it some nice vanilla sweetness yeah just very very approachable this is one of those those nice get you know i actually get a little bit of a, a little bit of a, a honey note to it as well very very nice you know nice and that's the one thing with, with an 80 proof bourbon is you know if you have any experience with you know bourbon, whiskey in general, anything 80 proof is usually gonna be very approachable. You know, nice and smooth, easy to drink, generally pretty decent flavors, especially from a bourbon standpoint. So you kind of know what you're what you're getting with that. So very, very nice. So and yeah, one of the other things I was going to mention before. So if if you guys aren't aware of the Bourbon 30, you're probably very aware of a lot of the special releases um, that I believe are actually Kentucky only uh, releases. And those are going to be, um, you know, through the Jay Maddenly portion of the business. Um, he has released, you know, some of the the old Baldy, both of those. Uh, there's a newer, a, a brand new one that was just released, and it's I've lost um, the name of that. So maybe, uh, maybe Jeff, you can let us know what um, the name of the the newest release. But it, it's gotten you know all kinds of you know accolades. You know people clamor over this stuff. They they love these releases. Um, they sell out in in no time. And um, you know before you know it, everything has kind of gotten into the the secondary market, which you know that that's a, a whole different story. But um, yeah, they, you know, they have these, you know, really fantastic releases. Um, I don't know how often it looks like it's been, you know, maybe two or three in the past year or so, uh, maybe even more, maybe even four. So, um, so, you know, those are, those are some of the, the, you know, highly sought after, um, releases that, that he does. And, um, you know, he can be, you know, thanked for, for those and and you know participating in the the blending of those and putting those those releases together so um you know that's a, a very very um hot you know bourbon item nowadays um you know people wait in line and everything for for those so fantastic so all right so let's move on to so the second one we're going to do is the uh the proof age uh this one is going to be uh 45 percent um uh, ABV or 90 proof, and this one also is aged a um, a minimum of um, four years as well. So let's see what we've got there. So 
And thanks to uh, Trisha, she was the one who was nice enough to to put all of this stuff together to uh, send it to me and allow me to um, you know kind of do the the review and the tasting and and all of that. So this is more of a, a tasting than it is a review. I really wanted to kind of try to just showcase you know this product as a as a whole. You know, try to let you guys know you know what they Bourbon Thirty is is kind of all about. Um, and uh, so I guess with the with the Bourbon Thirty, kind of a little bit of what I've read is apparently the the Bourbon Thirty was kind of a code for. I believe um, Jeff and either his brother, when 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 the dad was was away, that it was Bourbon Thirty, meaning it was kind of clear the coast was clear. They could kind of get into a little bit of the stash. So I felt that was kind of uh, kind of neat. So it's a little bit of a, an homage uh, to his uh, to their dad. So that was that was kind of neat in itself. So. All right, good. So good. I'm glad I got that right. I wanted to. I wanted to make sure. So, all right. So I'm going with the again. This is the Bourbon Thirty, the proof age, uh, ninety proof, and again, this is aged a minimum of uh, four years as well. So, all right. Let's see what we got on the nose here. Oh, boy. So a little bit different. So we're up in, in proof just just slightly. Boy, a nice, a nice kind of like a, a nuttiness, kind of a nice nuttiness to it. Um, still, still, still a little bit of a floral type of note. It's still sweet, really nice and sweet. Again, you're not getting a lot of a lot of heat or anything on the nose. Um, still very, very approachable. The brown sugars are there for sure, kind of like a caramelized sugar. So really, really nice nose. And again, even a little bit of that, that honey kind of comes through a little bit on that. Hmm. All right, let's give this a try. Boy, really nice and sweet. I really, really like the, the nose on that. Cheers. Boy, I would say my, my first thought on that is right away, those, those really nice kind of deep caramels, um, you know, burnt sugar, the, the vanilla, really, really kind of coming through on, on this. This would be a really, really nice um, sipping, sipping whiskey. And again, at, at only, you know, 90 proof, I say only 90 proof. I mean, in the world of, of you know, proof, you know, 90 proof is still you know, very high for the most part. So don't let that fool you. I mean, you still have to be, you know, very careful for, with these. All right, so let's check the uh, the chat, see kind of what's going on a little bit. Mike Snook, how's it going? Kyle, how's it going? Bourbon Blind, Press Man, buddy, how's it going? Welsh Toro. Good group of people up to 23. Mike Snook, how's it going? Yeah, really good uh, Good group of, uh, of guys in here. Chris, how's it going? Bourbon Sane. So uh, a couple channels that are in here right now. Uh, Bourbon Sane, Chris, newer channel. Go check him out. Subscribe to his, um, to his, uh, his channel. Good old Gary Page just popped in. Other, uh, also known as my father. Thanks for popping in. Peter White, how's it going? Obviously, you guys know about the mash and drum. Jason, he's got a great, fantastic channel. And then also, I wanted to say, with the with the Bourbon 30, um, eventually, I'll have something linked to the to the distillery. Go check them out. See what you guys think. You know, hopefully, you guys will, will really uh, enjoy a lot of what they're doing. So, Nick, how's it going? I know you were already in here before, so... Mr. Dan Trout. All right, so um, yeah, really, really nice. I like, I really like the uh, the proof age. So I'd be interested to know, you know, a little bit more of of how some of these were developed and and why and and all of that. That's probably a 
you know, another show maybe where eventually I can have uh, Mr. Mattingly on um, more of a, a video part of it and we can kind of discuss some of that. So, but for now, the, uh, the proof age, very nice, um, you know, sit down with easy drinking, um, you know, bourbon. All right, so let's go, let's move on to, boy, that's that's really nice. And actually, as the finish develops on the proof age, you start to get a little bit more of the the oak and nuttiness that kind of uh, starts to linger a little bit. So the the finish is probably with that a little bit more on the on the the medium side. So really, really nice, um, kind of full flavored, um, you know, bourbon. I, I really really enjoy that. Now I'm going with three bourbons and then finishing up with a rye, and then we'll go to the the two um, uh, private reserves. So. All right, so now we're going to move on to again. This is going to be their their small batch. We're moving up again in in proof. So I don't know if you guys can see that or not, but for for something that's got a minimum of four years, and I guess Jeff, you can let me know if if with any of these, I know it says a minimum of four years, but maybe with some of this stuff, we're now starting to get into five, six, maybe even longer, depending on how long some of these have um you know kind of been in the in the barrel now trisha was nice enough to put i think on most of these now this was the proof age she had indicated october of 2018 i'm guessing that's probably when it was when it was bottled so so this would have been just basically a month ago and maybe it just reached uh four years at at that point so all right so let's get into so again this is the small batch this is going to be 100 proof or 50% uh, ABV. And again, this too is, is indicated as minimum uh, age for four years. So, oh boy. So you can see, I mean, as you start to, this is always the interesting part with working your way through anything with different proofs on it. Um, now we're up into 100 proof. This is technically considered their, their small batch, which I believe just in reading some of the uh, the literature that was sent that these are very, very small batches. So uh, that's, you know, a an interesting term in, in today's day and age because small batch is a very relative term. I mean, it could be anywhere technically from, you know, two barrels to maybe 50,000 barrels. And, you know, one of the bigger companies may consider that a small batch, but um, these are truly going to be considered uh, a small batch uh, bourbon. So again, 50% um, uh, ABV, 100 proof. So let's see what we've got here. And the color on this is fantastic. It's a really nice um, mahogany. I'm guessing with it being four years that maybe the, the char level on this is, is on the higher side, maybe three, four, something like that, just based on, on those uh, colors. But um, yeah, as you can see, it's coming through really nice. So I think as you guys see it, um, kind of, you know, on your end, it, it really kind of looks very, very similar. So, all right. So, so like Jeff said, so the single barrel four year yields around 220 bottles. So yeah, I mean, that's, I mean, it, I mean, that is as, as small as you're going to get. I mean, these are our small batch releases. I mean, this is, this is what's nice about that. That's being able to really you know craft and and blend what it is you like um to get to you know their their flavor profile so all right so let's see texas owl how's it going buddy tofamatic thanks for stopping in appreciate it thanks jason hit the hit the like button folks i appreciate that and if, if for some reason you haven't subscribed, hit that one too. I'd, I'd greatly appreciate it. So, all right. So let's go ahead and we'll kind of get into uh, into the nosing on this. So, and again, this is considered their, their small batch release, 100 proof. Boy, that's the very first thing. So very, um, a little bit more of a, a concentrated nose. So right away, you're getting a lot of these dark fruits, like a cherry, even a little bit of a little bit of a chocolate note there to it. 
yeah, still some of the um, some of the oak is really kind of wanting to come through. Yeah, that that caramel note, really, really nice, really nice nose. So I'm interested, really looking forward to do to the uh, the taste on this. So let's give this one a try. Cheers, guys. Wow. So very, very different uh, profile from, from the first two. Very, I would say, dark fruit, chocolate forward. Some proof there, so you're starting to get a little bit more of the heat but right away. And the, the heat, it, it's wanting to hit you right on the front to the mid palate, like right away. It's letting you know there's a little something to it, so... Really nice kind of a uh, oak to it, maybe even a um, a little bit of a a nuttiness to it, and there's something else there. Yeah, maybe as it starts to kind of get into the finish part on this, you start to pick up a little bit more of a a wave of like a like a butterscotch, something along those lines. It's real, kind of leaves this nice like little tingle on your tongue. Um, still sweet, a little bit of oak and stuff that's there. But a nice, a nice kind of chocolatey uh, type of, of note to it. A little bit as the finish begins to develop, it, it's starting to dry out a little bit more. But, you know, you start to get that with, you know, when you get up into the high, little higher proof of, of bourbon, so... Yeah, really, really, um, really nice. So, yeah, it's kind of interesting just to kind of go, to kind of go back and forth a little bit on on these, just to kind of see, you know, some of the different notes, whether it's nosing or tasting, things along those lines. But really, really nice. That's uh, that's a really nice, really nice whiskey there. So again, that's the uh, that's their small batch. Um, uh, one other thing I was going to ask uh, Jeff was the uh, distribution um approximately what states or what areas are are you guys um distributed in just to let everybody else know in the event that this is something that they do see in their um their liquor store and, and they can kind of pick it up so all right let's check out the um all right so jeff was saying so the profiles i look for in the 90 proof is a rich body full of flavor so i would agree that 90 the 90 proof going back to the proof age it was that it really had a nice kind of full bodied um you know profile to it nice and sweet very approachable but yeah very very nice okay so just just kentucky for now so yeah hopefully hopefully you'll be able to get some more uh distribution with with this so that's a really very nice uh lineup so far so All right, what else do we have going on here? All right, so let's go on to, um, now the fourth in line is gonna be the uh, rye whiskey. So this is gonna be a little bit, um, a little bit different. So we'll see uh, what we've got here. Uh, let me grab, sorry, I'm gonna grab my water here real quick. Sorry about that. Yeah, the um, interesting part now is um, as I kind of was talking a little bit, had a little sip of water with the with the small batch, I started getting a little bit of a, like a tobacco or a leather type of note. So that was really interesting. It it's kind of become a a very full bodied. Um, uh, bourbon, so really, really nice. I'm, I'm a, I'm a big fan of, I'm a, you know, big fan of, of all of them. But that hundred proof is, is really, 
really, really nice. So, all right, so let's move on to the uh, rye whiskey. So we've got a little bit of information on that. And this one is, so this one was barreled at, so this is nine, so it was indicated on the, on the sample bottle as uh, 98 proof for the, for the rye whiskey. So, um, and again, aged a minimum of, of uh, four years. So that in itself, in, in today's day and age, when you're starting a business or whatever it may be, especially in the bourbon world, and you're not sourcing anything, to have the patience to allow your product to age a minimum of, of four years, um, you know, my hat goes off to these companies that are are willing to to do that. So, um, I mean, I know the the big rush is to try to get product out there and and bring in money, but to have the patience to allow a product to you know rest for you know a minimum of of four years. That's that's nice to see because what happens is like like I'm tasting tonight, you start to get those those more well-rounded, a little more refined um, you know type of whiskeys where if they're pulling this at you know two years, it's significantly different. I mean we've all probably had things that are you know, two years old or, or under, even or even under, I mean, obviously for it to be considered a straight straight bourbon, you know, we've got a, a minimum of, of two years. There's some other different rules and stuff that apply for with ages on it and all that. But if we just go with the, the premise that straight whiskey is, is two years old, that anything below that we've had, you know, that youth really comes out. It becomes very, you know, grainy, um, you know, grain forward, all of that. And it's, it's not something that's that's very desirable to a lot of us who really enjoy, you know, a lot of the the, the better whiskeys out there. So, anyway, all right. So who else do we have in the uh, Richie Z? Hey, buddy, how's it going? I appreciate that. Thanks for stopping in. All right, good group of guys tonight. I appreciate you guys for stopping in. And uh, Jeff, thanks again for taking the time to, to be interactive with, with, with all of us. Um, you know, I greatly appreciate it. I like when I have the opportunity to have somebody in the chat or, or you know, live, and, and you can kind of shed some light on, on all of that. So, and if there's anything that you have that's kind of in the works or, or coming up, uh, you know, feel free to to share that with with everybody as well. So, all right. In the meantime, I've got the uh, the rye whiskey. So this is again the Bourbon Thirty uh, rye whiskey. Uh, this is going to be forty nine uh, percent uh, ABV or ninety eight proof, and again aged uh, a minimum of of four years. So, all right. Let's see what we've got on the uh, the nose here. So, oh boy. So right away you get hit with a really nice kind of that, that that standard or typical rye note that you get. Little bit of spearmint there. Hmm. Um you get kind of the 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 rye. So the rye for me always has a tendency to come through as, you know, a, a very grainy type of um of nose just because of how potent the grain is so you always get that kind of that that full bodied type of of nose with with a rye whiskey right away and that's exactly what i'm getting so and as you can see again very very nice uh color on this you know nice like you know mahogany um you know copper amber type of color so really really nice uh color to it and the, the legs, I mean, as, I don't know if you guys can see or not, but as it, it's really clinging to the, to the glass really, really well. So um, that's usually a, a good sign. So really nice nose, sweet, spearmint, approachable. So I'm interested to see what this, uh, what this tastes like. So cheers.
boy, very, what I would describe it is, describe it as, is like very, very like lively. Um, it's a nice rye spice uh, at almost 100 proof, 98 proof. Not a lot of heat, a little less heat than the, the 100 proof uh, bourbon we had before, which was a small batch. Um, yeah, again, not, not a lot of heat. Nice spearmint, that, just the rye spice in general. For all of us who've had uh, rye whiskeys, you, you kind of know what I mean with, with that, but really nice kind of rye spice to it. Yeah, again, you've got some of the, the caramel notes that are kind of wanting to come through a little bit with this one. Yeah, it's very a very approachable rye. So this would be how I describe rye whiskey approachable with a great rye balance to it, a little bit of oomph to it, you know, at, again, almost 100 proof. The, the mid palate is really where this starts to kind of take off, the mid to the back of the palate for me. Leaves with that just lingering rye spice with that spearmint note. Very approachable, still sweet. Um, I don't know, without knowing the, the uh, mash bill on, on this one, um, yeah, it's just, it's just a very, you know, so one other thing I'd say with, with rye whiskey, and I, I experiment with, with rye quite a bit from a, from a cocktail standpoint as well. I think this would be a fantastic rye whiskey if you were making like a Manhattan or something like that. Just, it's, it's got enough of that, that rye characteristic with a nice proof to it that not only would it be great to just sit down and sip on, but to, you know, put something in a cocktail. Now, you know, people sometimes think of, you know, you know, cocktail as well. You, you know, you're just, you know, trying to push this towards a cocktail. Well, if you're making good drinks for people, you know, you want there to be a, a good product. I mean, if you're not using a good whiskey, your drink isn't going to be as good. So with that being said, you know, when you're using, again, good products to make good, you know, cocktails, you get a good drink. So it's not to, to ever slight a product or anything like that. It's, it's just a really nice, straightforward, easy sipping rye whiskey and again if you want to make a cocktail with it um i would have no no problem whatsoever with this all right so let's see if we've got daniel how's it going buddy thanks for stopping in i appreciate it all right who else do we have in here welsh i know i said hi to you before all right so this is a 95 95 rye so i'm assuming 95.5 five being the the malted barley i'm assuming so yeah and i think um you know as far as an old-fashioned if you wanted to make a, a rye old-fashioned i think it would be absolutely absolutely fantastic it's just a really nice thanks it's just a really nice well-balanced easy drinking you know rye whiskey you know and and that's the thing i mean every night everybody doesn't need something that's always going to just blow them away with something. I mean, that's what a lot of us do when we reserve those times for the higher proof stuff. We know what we're getting into with the extremely high proof stuff. And um, you just can't compare the, the, the two. They're, they're two completely different things and meant for, for different stuff. So you really can't compare the two. So really nice. And, and again, I've said it before on a lot of things. I'm, I'm a big fan of the, the 95.5 uh, rye mash bill. I think it's a, a fantastic rye whiskey for multiple different, you know, things. So not only to just, you know, sip on it, but to 
take your time and make a cocktail, a good drink with it, you know, old fashioned Manhattan, you know, things along those lines, you know, really, really nice uh, drink. So, all right, so let's go. Um, I'm going to take a quick sip here and uh, we'll move on to, so this is going to be, now we're going to move into a little bit more of the, the premium line. So this isn't going to be any of the, the old Baldy or anything like that. But again, this is going to be their, the, the Jay Mattingly private reserve. So I think this is, you know, correct me if I'm wrong, but this is, you know, when you're putting your name on something, you know, this is really where, you know, kind of the proof is in the pudding, so to speak. This is really what you're looking for in a, a blend or a profile of, of, you know, the type of bourbon that you really enjoy kind of drinking. So, All right, before we do that, let's get into Yeah, so like Jeff said in here, so you finished the rise to be different from the rest of the industry rise. So I guess with that being said, so are you aging these um, in, in secondary barrels or something along those lines that's maybe changing the the profile of just the standard 95.5 um, uh, mash bill? Okay, so that's interesting. So I think with with the rye, I think that's maybe where that refined um, smoothness was kind of coming in. So I think anytime, as a lot of us know, when you um, kind of introduce a, a whiskey to a secondary barrel, it starts to go through just that that other secondary process where it's kind of smoothing out the the whiskey. So you could kind of tell a little bit of of that just from the standpoint of of how smooth and and kind of like approachable that that really was so really fantastic so let me go back to if we've uh we've got still a little while so i'm going to go back through a little bit here and just kind of see now that i've gone through these if something changes a little bit for me so and if there's something that you guys uh have questions on or, or anything along those lines you know let me let me know so I've got Dan and Jason who are kind of moderating things a little bit. So if you guys see um, anything, let me know, guys. Oh, so, okay, so interesting. Thanks, Dan. So that's why, that's kind of interesting, taking a rye whiskey and then finishing it or, you know, adding it to a secondary bourbon barrel. So that's that's really interesting. And maybe that's where a little bit more of the the smoothness and sweetness was, was really starting to, to kind of come in. So, hmm. so I'm just going to go back to the, this again is their single barrel. So, and again, I'll have some information uh, after the, the live is over, I'll put some links to the distillery. And if you guys want to reach out to, uh, to Jeff, I know they've got a lot of different uh, programs in terms of being able to do uh, barrel picks and things along those lines. Um, you know, so yeah, this is definitely something I would, I would love to come down at, at some point and, um, and maybe take a, take a look through the, uh, the distillery and, um, you know, just kind of see the, the behind the, the scenes of the operation. So that'd be, that'd be fantastic. Yeah, I can see. So that is, I mean, as you say, with, uh, you know, a lot of the, the candy flavor, just going back to that. So that rye is, it really is, it really is that. When I was smelling it first, you you weren't getting necessarily a lot of the, the rye characters. You were getting a lot of that smoothness that was really coming out. And maybe that was a little bit of the secondary bourbon barrel aging that was, that was kind of toning that down a little bit. Yeah, that's really nice. Nice and just smooth. I know a lot of people get freaked out about using the, the term smooth and, and what it is, but that's exactly what it is. It's really, it's, it is very like dessert, like it's sweet and, and just nicely balanced. It's a really, really nice rye whiskey. I really like that. All right. What else have we got? Thanks. Yeah. I would love to, to come and see now uh, with that being said, so the end of May uh, this year, myself, 
Jason from the Mash and Drum and uh, Dan Trout, who's in here as well. We're going down to Kentucky for a few days, take some distillery tours, meet with some people, things along those got uh, things along those lines. So we're trying to get some things, you know, set up and and all of that. So we'll see what uh, what happens there, and uh, depending on uh, time frame, maybe we can uh, put something together. But we can we can talk about that uh, later on as well. So, all right, what else is going on in the uh, the chat here? Yeah, so that's a good point, like uh, Jeff, um, you know, mentioned before. So when you consider something a bit of a, a hybrid, you know, there's a lot of people who will say, well, rye whiskey, I don't like rye whiskey. Well, maybe if they know the process of, of how something else is being done, that maybe they'll they'll appreciate it or like it a little bit more. And I could see as a, a rye whiskey, um, you know, that one specifically, where probably gravitate towards it just because of the sweetness that that candy type of of sweetness to it really it was really a nice a nice uh whiskey so all right what else do we have so nick yeah we're trying to still kind of plan some things and then one of those nights we're still trying to do a a meetup with a lot of people so if there's anyone who's either heading down that way or is already living in the area. Uh, we're trying to put something together where we can meet up with with a few people, you know, have some drinks, things along those lines, you know, just kind of have a good time and, and hopefully, you know, meet some of you guys if if you've got time. So yeah, so like Chris just said, so with that being said, so I know Chris had posted something bourbon saying he had posted something with his with his wife trying a Manhattan the other day. And if you're not already a whiskey fan, and depending on which, you know, rye they were using, uh, I'm assuming they were using rye. Traditionally, in a Manhattan, it should be rye whiskey. But um, depending on what that would have been, that, you know, either it was too strong, maybe higher proof, or not as good a rye whiskey. But something like this, that's sweeter and more approachable, um, I think that would be, you know, a good place to start for for people who say they don't like rye whiskey. So this would be one of those ones that would be a really nice kind of interesting rye whiskey to give to that person who says, I don't like rye. So, and I, my guess would be right away, they wouldn't even know that they were drinking a, a rye whiskey, so. All right, what else we have? Yeah. So like Jeff said, like that, I, I, that's the one thing I think that's, that's very fun for a lot of people that, that private barrel experience, being able to go into any Rick house and, and pull a few barrels, you know, pull some things from the, um, you know, straight from the barrel and try stuff. Um, you know, it's something I've, I've never done. I mean, I've been through, uh, you know, several Rick houses, but really never had a chance. I mean, a little bit I have, but uh, to really sit down and, and have a chance to kind of pull whiskeys that you're going to want to have, you know, kind of your name put on, so to speak. So that's a really fun, um, you know, opportunity. So hopefully people will, you know, take advantage of, of you know, your program from, from that standpoint. I think it's, you know, very interactive. It's still smaller where it's kind of intimate enough to be, you know, very, again, you know, singular from the standpoint that, you know, you're, you're treated well, you know, and all of that. So, you know, if I can get some, some guys to, to do it, um, I'd, I'd love to absolutely, uh, you know, to try to do something like that. So, all right. So with that being said, so let's move into, so Jeff, I've got a couple of the, uh, the Jay Mattingly, the 1845 private, private reserve, uh, the first one I've got is 106 uh, proof. I think the other one is actually 116. So we'll see. Uh, we'll see what we got. I'm going to try these two and then go back to a couple of the other bourbons and just kind of see where we are kind of profile wise. So. Yes, Daniel, I did step up my uh, my mic game from the standpoint of. Uh, 
it's just a nice little shotgun mic, and I think I got the idea from you, so thanks. I You've given me good advice on things. Don't tell anybody else I said that, though. All right, so let's see what we've got here. So, oh, boy, so right away, you're hit with this nice kind of wave of caramel. A little bit of a kind of a corn presence. Um, I don't know if like on any of these with the 1845, if you if you want or you can share the uh, the mash bill, but um, I get a nice kind of rye kick on that as well. I don't know if it's a little bit higher, still with that sweetness. So there's still a little bit of sweetness that's there. Nice kind of really nice oak presence to it, but still sweet, not overly oaky or anything like that. Um, these I don't know the the minimum age or anything. So maybe, um, Jeff, if you can, you can maybe share the, the age on the uh, the private reserve uh, line. Oh, interesting. So, okay, so this is a 75214. So, all right, so a little bit... Uh, yeah, I mean, I guess in today's day and age, the 21% rye um, could technically be considered uh, a higher rye, um, you know, mash bill, but um, it's probably going to lend itself to being, you know, a little bit, little bit on the sweeter side, lo low malted barley. Hmm. Yeah, really nice. Those those dark fruits are kind of really wanting to to kind of come through a little bit now as well. All right, let's give this a try. Cheers, guys. Yeah, so right away, you're hit with those nice kind of dark fruits, like right away, the caramel. Um, and there's this like little kick to it. It almost feels like a, um, like a, like a, like a burnt sugar type of, of, of kind of punch to it. Interesting. Maybe even like a, this is kind of a little bit different, but I'm getting a, like a, like a soda uh, type of, of feel, like where it's almost a little bit, um, um, like where there's some carbonation, kind of you get that feel, like that tingly uh, feel, along with that, that kind of soda sweetness to it. That corn is there. That rye is really nice. I mean, I think the rye, as the finish kind of starts to develop a little bit, that rye really starts to come out really, really nicely. Yeah, it's really, really, really nice. I like that. Nice and sweet. A little bit different. Yeah, very, very like well balanced. This is one of those kind of interesting, I would say from a from a profile standpoint, it's a little bit different than, than anything I've had, which is a good thing. I think sometimes when people say different, they equate that to it being bad. This is not bad by any means different in a in a good way um and sometimes when you're of a profile of something you know and you're you're stuck on the same you know caramels and vanillas and all that those standard bourbon you know notes at times things are are beyond that it's it's one of those things where you really have to you know taste something to appreciate the the profile of that so if if I'm being generic in in that statement, I I'm sorry, but you know it's it is a little bit it's a little bit different of a of a profile, and I wish I wish you could try this to see exactly what what I mean, but it's a really unique, just different flavor profile of a of a bourbon. So just very very interesting. And again, 106 proof, it lets you know like right away, but the heat goes away very quickly and starts to dry out a little bit. So 
left with a little bit of that oak and and kind of just maybe caramelized sugar type of, of note on the on the finish. Yeah, anybody, if you guys want to reach out to Jeff or talk to him about anything or setting something up, please do, please do so. That was part of why I wanted to do this. So I like to try to do, as a lot of you guys know, you know, I do a lot of the craft or small, um, you know, distillery reviews of things. So I, I want people to know, you know, a lot of these other companies that are that are out there. So if I'm given the opportunity to to do something like this, you know, I try to jump at, at these. So, you know, and I, I appreciate Jeff for taking the, the time to kind of be in here and, and, and kind of chat with everybody. So, but yeah, like Nick said before, you know, a different whiskey. I mean, it is, it's something that, that really kind of stands out and that's, that's hard to try to, you know, express sometimes, you know, uh, you know, in a video or whatever it may be. And even watching a lot of the guys who do things, you know, like blind, you know, just like John or Kyle and those guys with their with their channels, you know, at times you you struggle to, you know, pull out a profile because it's something that's a little bit different and you're always searching for a lot of the same, you know, types of things, but in in this case, the it's a little bit different so to to try to be able to, you know, define or pick everything out that's there can be can be very very difficult at times so all right what else do we have in the uh, chat here yeah and I and I hope you guys do reach out to, to Jeff and just kind of see you know what what his whole kind of program and, and things are about so I think it's it's important to to kind of support the you know the the craft or the smaller, you know, distilleries and, and really kind of give them a shot. There's a lot of them that are doing absolutely fantastic things, you know, out there. And I think that's one of the, the interesting um, things for me is being able to do reviews of, you know, different distilleries that are considered, you know, craft and just see what it is they're, they're really producing and their products and, and things along those lines. So yeah, definitely. If you get you know go go check them out so all right what do we have here hey DJ how's it going thanks for stopping in I appreciate it bud All right, so let's do this. So let's go on to, so I'm gonna go to the the next one will be uh, the 116 proof. So we'll see what we've got. So that'll be an interesting, I'm gonna keep the, the 106 proof here, so. All right, so shameless plug. So if for some reason anybody who's watching this now or on the replay, if you haven't subscribed, please do so. Hit the subscribe button, like, bell notification, leave comments, all that good stuff. So I know you guys are all, all good about that. So yes, 116 proof. So we're going to go, we're going to go into that now. So yeah, that first one, the 106, it really, it's got a nice long finish to it. Um, there's, there's this kind of oak presence with this little bit of sweetness that I'm trying to figure out exactly what that, what that is. There's something that's there that I'm not used to to tasting. So um, this is probably where I need a, a flavor wheel in front of me to see, you know, whatever it is. So, but yeah, very, very unique. I guess, Jeff, my question to you with that, um, the, the 106 proof of the 1845 Private Reserve, what is it that you're looking for, you know, in that from a profile standpoint? Is there something that you're you know, looking for, you know, specifically with, with that. In the meantime, I'm going to, uh, I'm going to kind of nose the, uh, the 116 proof, but first you can see the one nice thing I really like with all of this is the, just the color on these. I mean, these are really, really nice color. I mean, this is, 
if I was like looking at this, I mean, this almost looks like it has a secondary finishing, like a, like a port or something like that. I mean, it's very like, you know, wine esque, you know, kind of, I mean, it's got a really, really nice dark mahogany type of color to it. So really nice. And it coats the glass really well. So, all right, so let's get into the uh, nose. So again, this is the, the Jay Mattingly 1845 Private Reserve 116 proof. And again, this one was, I believe, bottled in October of 2018 as well. So um, I'm going to assume that this is still the same, um, the same mash bill as well. And I think it was 74, 21, and 4. So if it's if it's still the same, I guess let me know. I'm assuming I'm assuming it is, but all right, let's see what we've got on the nose. All right, so right away, a little little bit more kind of alcohol on the nose, but very um, very dark fruit uh, forward with with this one. Um, really nice kind of still sweetness that's there. That oak is there. Hmm. Boy. Yeah, I really, really like the nose on, on this one so far. Ah, that sweetness, that caramel that's there. Uh, boy, there's some, still something else. Maybe a little bit of a... Maybe a little bit of a... a an orange zest or uh, some type of zest to it. But yeah, and maybe that's the dark fruit that's there for me um, is is very like cherry forward on on this one for for the dark fruit. But if you're if you're picking out a, a particular fruit, yeah, like maybe that uh, the cherry or like a plum, something along those lines. Something that's very kind of intense. All right, so let's give this a uh, let's give this a, a try. Cheers, guys. So my first thought is right away, very similar to the 106 proof. However, a little bit more heat on this one. Still, you know, 10 proof higher. The one difference I would say right away from the two, the 106 to the 116, is now that you're getting up into the higher proofs, like a lot of us experience, is that more just intense, bold flavor right away. And I think that's where a lot of people appreciate a, a higher proof bourbon, is that not only is it a higher proof, but generally speaking, it brings with it a lot of more just refined um, concentrated flavors. So, and I think that's exactly what, what this is. I mean, this is like brother and then big brother is kind of how I would define these two. So yeah, there's, um, it just kind of, after you taste it and kind of go back and smell it, uh, you start to get a little bit more of like a, like a vanilla Coke, like a vanilla cherry Coke type of, of nose to it. Very unique and different type of, of nose to this. So Yeah, so like Jeff said, I mean, to, to take you on, you know, a journey, it's exactly that. That's the one interesting part with a lot of these bourbons is when you're searching for, you know, what it is you're trying to smell, taste, you know, whatever it may be, that's what a lot of us, I think, really enjoy is that just the... Again, he called it like a journey. That's exactly it's exactly that. You're searching and and pulling and you know all of that to try to you know figure out what it is that's that's there and why you like it or whatever it may be. So really, really nice, different. That's the one thing I keep going back to is that it's different. It's just a different uh, profile than a lot of other um, bourbons. The one thing I would say with it is it's very um, like, um, like refined or, um, I'm, I'm trying to figure out the, the, the word for, for this, um, 
it's just it's very unique and and different and and that's the one thing i really enjoy about it is that it's it's different and it doesn't have to be the same that we all you know kind of have a tendency to kind of gravitate towards so i i really really enjoy and enjoy that all right so let's see what else we've got here all right so okay so it is a number four char and looking at this i mean based on the color you can kind of see that all day i mean if this is in the um you know let's just say four to six year range i don't make a little bit more age to it um but it's a really really nice really nice color on that so yeah i mean i think i think for a lot of us that are are in the in the chat you know tonight that a lot of us you know just in conversations and and in chatting back and you know that we all appreciate a, a nice you know high proof you know bourbon i would say i mean for you guys if if you're able to you know a get your hands on on any of it you know you know i i hope you do but they're all different in in, in you know kind of in their own right however you know when you're comparing and again it's it's not fair to compare i would say either of the 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 j mattingly 1845 with any of the others they're completely different uh profiles i would say a lot of the 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 bourbons are are what i would say more of a, a mainstream things that are going to be very you know approachable to the the general public still very good bourbons uh the rye fantastic that was very unique in itself um you know but when you kind of step up to uh, a different kind of you know beast so to speak you're you're getting you know a, just a different product and that's exactly what you get with that that Mattingly 1845 the private reserve just very very interesting unique different um and I think a lot of you guys would would really really enjoy and really enjoy that so all right let me take a quick little sip here and uh I'm going to go back and forth a little bit on the 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 106 which I've got here and 116 here so uh real quick so kind of a shameless plug a little bit so I'm working on as you guys can see some wooden kind of challenge coins and this is basically just to kind of get a few more things out generate a little bit of money to help kind of uh get me a laptop so I can do more uh live streams and things and get guests and stuff on so um I'm working on those so hopefully you guys will be a little bit um interested in in uh in some of those and uh, i'll let you know a little bit more if you're if you are interested in in one or two or, or how many ever um you can always shoot me a, an email and let me know and I'll, I'll let you guys know a little bit more once i've um i've got those kind of ready to go uh same thing with the glasses i've got a guy working on some stuff right now so i'll have that and um yeah just try to get a few different uh few different things and stuff out to uh to uh everybody so all right so enough of the uh the shameless plugs there so all right so let's go back to the this again is the 106 um and again this is the j manningly 1845 yeah you can see just in in doing like a quick comparison um the the 116 proof you you definitely get a little bit more of the the heat the alcohol on it not necessarily in a bad way you just know that it's a little bit higher proof so I just I guess the thing I love about this is the fact that it's that it's just so different and maybe maybe that that flavor I'm getting is something that's a little bit more of a like a like an orange or an orange zestiness or some type of citrus that's that's there especially in the in the 106 let's see what we've got with the uh the 160 yeah i mean for the 
Um, so with the 116, I get way more, uh, way more of the, the vanillas and the caramels where the 106 um, is still a little bit of the oak, but I'm getting more of a, like an orange zest uh, type of, uh, or an orange citrus type of uh, note to it. So very, very interesting. So I really like those. It's just a, it's just a really different, unique, uh, you know, profile to it. So, all right, let's see what we've got in the chat here. So, Eric, how's it going? I appreciate it. Hopefully everything uh, sounds and looks okay. I wasn't sure. I didn't see if you guys uh, were saying anything about the uh, the audio or the, the video part of it. So, Yeah, so uh, Richie, so I think like uh, like Jeff had mentioned before, um, right now this is only, I believe, being distributed in uh, Kentucky at this at this moment. Not to say that you can't maybe order it from somewhere. I don't know if that's uh, possible or not, but. Yeah, so it's, yeah, I really, really enjoy these. So the 116, I would say, uh, if you're looking for something that's a little bit more on the uh, the oak and the, the vanilla side of things, you know, a little bit more refined, the 116 you might like a little bit more. The 106 has a little bit more of the, still the oak, but with more of like a, a orange kind of like citrus type of, of note to it. Yeah, you just get way more on the 116. You just get way more, especially on the nose when you're when you're nosing both of them side by side. So, all right. So Silva, um, I don't have the bottle. So the only thing I've got is just sample bottles. So Trisha was nice enough uh, from Bourbon Thirty to send them to me. So I actually don't have the the bottles to uh, to show you what I. Um, now, the only thing I've got is, um, well, I really don't have anything that's going to show the, the bottle itself, unfortunately. I've got some pamphlets, but those have the, the Bourbon 30. They don't have the J. Mattingly. In the, um, if you just type in or you, you know, Google search the, uh, the J. Mattingly uh, 1845 uh, Private Reserve, you'll see exactly what it is I'm, I'm talking about. And again, I don't even know what the... Uh, what the availability is for uh, for any of these. So I know they're Kentucky only, but in terms of being able to order any of this, I don't know, you know, some states are, are funny. They won't allow you to, to ship or, or get anything in. I know some of the laws are starting to change a little bit, but um, you'll have to check on, on that yourself. All right, what else do we have here? All right, what else do we have here? All right, so anyway, that's kind of kind of where I'm at. Um, what else do I have here? Let me go back to uh, some of these. So I think I hit pretty much on the 1845. I think I kind of gave you guys a little bit of an idea um, as to what the profile of, of both the the 1845 private reserves were the 106 proof and the 116. I don't know if, if um, yeah, so like uh, uh, Jeff said, so go to their Facebook page. Um, they can see all the releases. Everything is going to be, um, you know, there. You can see exactly what's going on. You can reach out to Jeff, you know, schedule something if you want. Um, they've got a really interesting and unique um uh, barrel selection program, so so check that out as as well. So, uh, one other quick thing is the are both the 106 and the 116 proof both still available, or is is one gone, or or anything like that in terms of those releases? Are are either or both of these still uh, available? All right, 
so I'm going to go back to the 80 proof real quick. Just so, so different than the, the private reserve. I mean, it's kind of night and day, but you'd expect it to, so. All right, so again, this is the proof aged. Uh, this is 90 proof. Those two are a little bit similar. I uh, start to get a little bit more, a uh, little bit more behind the, the 90 proof. Again, that's the proof aged. And I think this is really where things started to, to kind of change for, for me. So once we get up into the 100 proof, which was technically considered their, their small batch, uh, this is when things started to kind of change a little bit more in terms of the overall flavor profile of a, of a bourbon. Oh, all gone, so, all right, sorry. So you guys can't get your hands on that. I'm, uh, I'm drinking something that you guys uh, can't get a hold of. So sorry to, uh, <laughs> sorry to, to kind of rain on your parade on that. So thanks, Dan. I appreciate that. Yeah, and that's the one thing. So like Jeff said, so I mean, I think that's the one interesting part of, of what they do is that all of the blending and the barrels you know, everything that they're doing there is just very, you you know, kind of unique and different and, and it's getting people involved. So I think if there's some programs or groups or, you know, if you guys belong to, you know, different bourbon societies or whiskey societies that maybe somebody wants to, you know, reach out and, and you know, consider doing some, some barrel picks, I think they'd be very approachable to, to all of that. So that's one nice thing. And I think a lot of us, that's kind of our, our goal and something that ultimately we, we really all would enjoy doing is being able to, you know, go to a distillery, go through a few barrels, do some picking and, and, you know, get something that, that you enjoy a, a profile that, that you enjoy. And I think their, their program, that opportunity. So. All right, let me do this real quick. I'm going to go back to rye whiskey. I really, really enjoyed that rye whiskey. And I like, I love the fact that it's, um, that it's finished in, in secondary, um, you know, uh, bourbon barrels just to kind of smooth it out and kind of give a little bit more kind of sweetness to it. Yeah, you can see even on the nose, it's very, I mean, you know, it's kind of rye, but it's very, be approachable it's it's muted from the standpoint that it's it's not a ton of rye right in your face and i would say most of the time with a lot of that 95.5 rye mash bill just the standard without it being finished in any secondary barrel is you know exactly what that is when you're you're smelling it and that's not what you get with this yeah very unique and different i really really enjoy that uh, that rye whiskey. So, all right, so I think I've kind of gone through um, just about anything, but I guess I would kind of, you know, finish up by saying again, you know, give them a, give them a try. You know, I know a lot of people may never have heard of them, um, but, you know, go to their Facebook page, you know, check them out, you know, see if there's anything that maybe interests you. And if anything that I described tonight, you know, fits, something that uh that you enjoy you know give them a try see if there's a chance that you can you know get something and um i i don't think you'll you'll regret it so yeah so like jeff said so that uh so the 1845 rye, so I bet that's going to be something that's going to be absolutely uh, fantastic. And I would imagine that if you take that and just kind of step it up a little bit more into that different line and you're looking for that particular, um, uh, uh, you know, profile, then, I mean, it's it's got to be uh, amazing. That'd be something I would I would love uh, a chance to, to try. So 
Uh, with that being said, so is that, so are, are all of what we're tasting now uh, available for the, um, the, the program? Like, are you able to go in and, and choose any of these lines or is it specific to just the, the Jay Mattingly uh, lineup uh, itself as far as being able to choose, um, you know, barrels and stuff? Yeah, Chris, uh, not yet. So hopefully uh, any day. I'm waiting for them to kind of do the review of, of all of the uh, monetizing. So hopefully before too much, too much longer. Yeah, and Jeff, thanks for, you know, taking the time to be in here. I know we kind of went over a little bit more in terms of uh, uh, time that we, we had talked about, but, you know, thanks for, for taking your, uh, your time and just kind of being in here and letting people, you know, know a little bit more about the, the company and the, the products and, and things along those lines. So um, I guess with that, we'll kind of wrap things up. Um, I've got a few more kind of reviews. So as you know, stay tuned. Um, I got some different stuff. Just did some uh, old Carter uh, reviews the other day. So those will be coming down uh, a little bit. I've got a few other products that were um, uh, sent as well. So I've got those things uh, coming as well. So uh, again, for all of you guys, I greatly appreciate uh, all of your your support uh, along the way and have uh, really just allowed me to continue to build the, the channel to, to what it is uh, now. So anyway, Jeff, Thank you so much. Uh, greatly appreciate you uh, stopping in here. Look forward to uh, uh, hopefully one day being able to, to meet you and then uh, maybe have you back on the, the channel when we can do a little bit more of a, a live interaction. So like I say, it's about the journey and not the journey. Cheers.